which is all ready for the worms. So we'll apply this to the unit because the worms have no teeth, so they can't eat. So we'll just literally chop it up through there. It can be a bit messy, but the worms will go for it quicker. So the food waste is pulped into a nice salad. Actually smells very nice as well. Um, the worms like this, they like the moisture, they like the waste, and we would just apply that straight into the unit. So we'll just go over to the unit. So we'll apply the food waste into the wormery in that consistency so the worms will eat that very very quickly they will go through that in about 24 hours one because it's macerated and two because it's quite warm so as it breaks down the worms move into it well these type of worms live just below the surface of the earth so they will rise up and move into the food waste it's not actually the food waste they eat they eat the microbes on the food waste so you want the food waste to kind of break down slightly once it started to break down, the worms will move into it and they literally scoop up the microbes on the food waste. Invariably, they get the food waste as well, but the idea is that they wouldn't really eat it like that. So after a few hours, once the microbes start to grow on it, they move into that, scoop up the microbes and the food waste and devour it. So, but they don't have any teeth either. So another thing we do, we sometimes put some sand in and things like that and some grit, really. Uh, we do that because the worms will put that grit at the back of their gullets. And when they scoop up the food waste, they grind it at the back of their gullets to chew it even down further so they can eat it. So if they, if they didn't have that ability, the grit, that obviously uh, the food waste would just stay there. So you, you know when they're not eating a lot, just sprinkle a bit of sand on and uh, within a day or two, they're back to eating full strength again. So we've got 40,000 plus worms in there. So you, you do want them to breed. They won't breed enough to top up their population. So we add to their population every year or two, depending on how they're doing. Uh, and also that helps us get a different age range of worms because you'll find after a couple of years, if you don't top it up, all the worms are more or less the same age, which is what you don't want. You don't want them the same age. You want older worms and younger worms um, for a good population. Um, so that's another reason we top up as well. But these worms are quite happy. They like it. It's a good surrounding. They've not escaped, really. You've not had too many escapees, I don't think. So uh, they, they've been quite happy. Once we start feeding proper, um, I think they'll settle in and, and then it starts to rise. It is a bit cold for the worms at the moment, but once the food waste goes on there, we get some rices and pastas and things like that in there, you should find the worms to be quite, quite warm because the food waste breaks down. It, it creates heat, obviously, and the worms move into the food waste. Break it over. But we have, but what we're trying to do is get a, an ecosystem in here. So we want not just worms. So you want pot worms, which we'll get from the uh, the food waste. So they will grow in here as, in here as well, which are um, small white worms. You get small white worms from the food from waste. the food waste. Yeah, How do they get yeah, because the they're they're in the green waste already. So we do obviously food waste is washed. Uh, food is washed before we consume it. But within it, there are tiny eggs and things like that. They don't harm us at all. But when you put them in an atmosphere such as this, they will grow. <laughs> and they're very tiny, so don't, don't panic. They're very, very tiny. But that's the kind of thing we want.